Hey. Come see with the makeup nurse. Come and take a seat with the makeup nurse. Trust me, it's the makeup nurse. Beautiful things with the makeup nurse. It's the makeup nurse. Yeah. It's the makeup nurse. Come see with the makeup nurse. Come and take a I'm back. Welcome back to my channel. The struggle is real with Pajami the makeup nurse. Today is Wow Me Wednesday and we're going to show you a little cooking for my grandson and it's also my it's square dance day, package protection day, electronic greetings day and it's also my daughter's birthday. So happy birthday to Alyssa. Three? Suddenly ahead of them, they saw the lights of a village. Maybe we'll find a bite to eat there, said the first. And the loft to sleep in, said the second. No harm in asking, said the third. Now the peasants of the disappeared strangers. When they heard that three soldiers were coming down the road, they talked them up. The soldiers stopped first at the house of Paul and Francis. Francis? I don't know. Francesca, probably, huh? <laughs> Good evening to you, they said. Could you spare a bit of food for 300 soldiers? We have had no food for ourselves for three days, said Paul. French Francesca made a sad face. It has been a poor harvest. The three soldiers went on to the house of Elber and Louise. Could you spare a bit of food and have you some corner where we could sleep for the night? Oh no, said Albert. We gave all we could spare to the soldiers who came before you. Our beds are full, said Louise. Are you following along? No. Keep going. You're getting close. You're getting close to the point. Vincent and Marie's, the answer was the same. It had been a poor harvest and all the grain must be kept for seed. So we went off to the village and not a peasant had any food to give away. They all have good reasons. One family had used the grain for feed, another had an old sick father to care for, and had too many mouths to feed. The villagers stood in the street and sighed. They looked as hungry as they could. The three soldiers talked together. Then the first soldier called out, Good people, the peasants drew near. We are three hungry soldiers in a strange land. We have asked you for food, and you have no food. Well, then, we'll have to make stone soup. What are they going to make? Stone soup. Stone soup. The peasants stared. Stone soup. That would be something to know about. First, we'll need a large iron pot. Large iron pot. The soldiers said the peasants brought 
the largest pot they could find, how else to cook enough? That's none too large, said the soldiers, but it will do, and now water to fill it, and then fire to heat it. It took many buckets of water to fill the pot, a fire was built on the village square, and the pot was set to boil. Now, if you please, three round smooth stones. Those were easy enough to find. The peasants' eyes grew round as they watched the soldiers drop the stones into the pot. Any soup needs salt and pepper. Salt and salt as as they salt and pepper there? Yeah. Children ran to fetch the salt and pepper. Stones like these general. But oh, if there were carrots, it would be a pet. Carrots? Yeah, carrots in front of you, right? Yeah. Throw those in the pot. Why, I think I have a carrot or two, said Francesca, and off she ran. She came back with her apron full of carrots from the bin beneath the right foot. A good stone soup should be cabbage, said the soldiers. As they sliced the carrots into the pot, but no use asking for what you don't have. I think I could find a cabbage somewhere in the morning, and she hurried home. Back she came with three cabbages from the cupboard under the bed. If we only had a bit of beef and a few potatoes, this soup would be good enough for a rich man's table. The peasants thought that over. They remembered their potatoes and the sides of beef oh, hanging in the oh. cellars. They ran to fetch them, a rich man's soup, and all from a few stones. It seemed like magic. Potatoes, put those in there. Oh. Ah, said the soldiers as they stirred in the beef and potatoes. If we only had a little barley and a cup of milk, this soup would be fit for the king himself. Indeed, he asked for just such a soup when the last he had with us. Any barley or oatmeal? The peasants brought their barley from the loss. They brought their milk from the wells. The soldiers stirred the barley and milk into the steaming broth while the peasants did. At last, the soup was ready. All of you shall taste. The soldiers said, but first, yep. a table was must be set. Great tables were placed in the square and all around were lighted. Such a soup, how could it smell? Truly fit for a king, but then the peasants asked themselves, would not such a soup require bread and a rose and cider? Soon a banquet was spread, and everyone sat down to eat. Never had there been such a feast, never had the peas. The peasants tasted such soup and fancy it made from stone. They ate and drank and ate and drank. After that, they danced. They danced and sang far into the night. At last, they retired, and the three soldiers asked, Is there not a loft where we could sleep? Let three such wise and splendid gentlemen sleep in a loft indeed. They must have the best beds in the village. So the first soldier, soldier slept in the priest's house, the second soldier slept in the baker's house, and the third soldier slept in the mayor's house. 
In the morning, the whole village gathered in the square to give them a send-off. Many thanks for what you have taught us, the peasants said to the soldiers. We shall never go hungry now that we know how to make soup from stones. Oh, it's all in the knowing house, said the soldiers, and off they went down the road. I hope you enjoyed this video and the riddle, the riddle, the riddle of the day is what did the snake name his daughter? Have a good day and I'll see you next time. Bye.